MMA has been completely life-changing for me. I fell in love with the idea of going from someone who didn't feel powerful to someone who could be powerful. It's never been about being famous or turning this into some giant career. It was always about how martial arts made me feel. The first time I fell in love with martial arts, I was five. My dad traveled a lot to Asia at the time, so he came back, I remember, from one of his trips with this like teeny tiny little gi. I would put it on and jump around and do crane kicks on my bed. Most other little girls might be having tea parties, but I was kicking people's asses in my mind. I was the kid who was always looking to prove something. I think a lot of it came from having an older brother. I always wanted to keep up with him. And we were always wrestling around and scrapping. I found a karate school that wasn't too far from where I grew up in Kansas City. And I was like, I want to be doing that. I just really enjoyed going to the gym, learning the moves, and working my way up the rankings. I got my black belt and then I graduated from high school. And I went to college and I really kind of left martial arts behind. After college, I kind of went through some stuff in my personal life. I was depressed at the time, to be honest. I knew I needed some sort of physical outlet where I could just go and not think about the other things that were going on in my life. Martial arts had done that for me in high school, and I thought, okay, if it did it for me then, it can do it for me again now. MMA became therapy for me because you literally can't think about anything else when someone's trying to punch you or when you're doing jujitsu and you're in the middle of a physical puzzle. It made me feel powerful. I see people come in and out all the time. It's really difficult for me to want to help somebody that just shows up, but she stuck around and I think after a while, I think I just realized she wasn't gonna leave, so I was like, ah, I should start helping her. She has an innate ability to stay focused and stay on track. She's like, I'm, I'm gonna do this no matter, I don't need somebody's support, I don't need somebody's help. I'm gonna do this, get out of my way. I really didn't think I was gonna fight, but everybody at that gym fought. It's a fighter's gym, so they're like, no, 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 you gotta do like at least one amateur fight. I was like, all right, I'll do, I'll do one. We'll see how it goes. So it's kind of more like a dare. I just remember thinking, oh, shit. like this is, this, is, this is real. I'm gonna fight. The feeling of subduing another human being with your bare hands is like a drug like no other. That feeling of power, I think, that little six-year-old me had always been wanting to experience just came like <laughs> flooding through me in that moment. I was like, oh, I can't get enough of this. This is amazing. I went six and one as an amateur, finished a lot of fights, did really, really well, and then it was kind of off to the races, what I thought was going to be off to the races for a pro career. Invicta was like the crown jewel of women's MMA. Like That was the top of the mountain. There were no women in the UFC at this point. Laura Senko, no primary strengths, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, ground and pound. I got that kind of big show feeling. The lights felt much brighter. Making her professional debut tonight, she's facing Laura Senko. I made a great first impression. I went out there, I got the finish in the second round. Senko on the back. It's your run. There's the town. Yeah. Make it victorious. Hometown. I thought that it was going to be, you know, on to the next. And boom, surprise, pregnant. <laughs> as much as I love Invicta, even when you're a champion, it wasn't enough money to sacrifice six hours a day away from your family. And that's why I stepped away when I got pregnant. Shannon Knapp, the woman who owns Invicta, said, hey, Marluce Coonan's gonna be in town. Would you be comfortable doing an interview with her during the broadcast? I said, yeah, but I mean, you do know I've never talked to a camera before. I've never held a microphone before. And she's like, no, 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 you'll be fine. What do you think about what Invicta's been able to accomplish in the past year? I think it's amazing if you see what it came My from. My first foray into television, it was just a quick, like, three or four minute interview in the middle of the broadcast. Shannon called me again to make it a more permanent, ongoing role. I'm here with our winner, Karolina Kovalkiewicz. I'm here with a once again victorious Megan Anderson. Being so close to someone right after they have a huge life moment. 
To be able to help them communicate their story, I, I think I fell in love with that. I'm here with our reigning and defending champion, Tanya Evinger. I never expected to be kissed on national television, <laughs> let alone by another woman. Oh, holy! Tanya Evinger! That Evinger kiss went viral. I think it was part of the reason why the UFC took notice. I think they appreciated how I handled it. My first UFC assignment was 2016. It was so exciting. The main event between Alex Caceres and Yaro Rodriguez is an intriguing matchup to be sure. By this point, I knew I wanted to do MMA television. Anybody that knows me knows as soon as I know my path, like that's what I'm laser focused on. I got a call from UFC. We're thinking of launching this new show. I knew when they approached me with the Contender Series that that was a really special opportunity. 10 fighters, five fights, one guy is gonna get that UFC contract. Very first season, I was just there to do a little bit of sideline reporting, post-fight interviews. Sean, congratulations. Then I interviewed Dana at the end when he would pick the contract winners. Dana, this show continues to deliver week after week after week. Once I got set on the path of being involved with the UFC, I immediately had my eyes set on what's the most I can achieve. My ultimate goal was commentary. I knew I could do it. I just started asking <laughs> for more and more, hey, can I, can I do this? Can I be on the desk? You know, anything that would allow me to have a little bit more of an analysis hat and less of a question asking hat. It was just a matter of convincing a lot of different parties in the UFC. Sniff at her nickname used to be Queen of Rio. Nice tie into Jose Aldo. Yeah, I knew if I proved myself in all of the areas surrounding this opportunity, the door would eventually open. Proud to be joined by my broadcast partners, former UFC lightweight contender Paul Felder and Laura Sanko joining us in the booth in addition to the multitude of other responsibilities you will have tonight. Welcome. I mean, why not? Why not? I, I'm ridiculously excited to be here. I've been a part of every episode of the show, so to be an even bigger part of it, sign me up every day of the week. That was a gorgeous transition to a double leg. He landed the left hand and level changed. When they put me in the commentary role, I was doing commentary and backstage reporting and ring announcing, and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was quite the juggling act. She was running around like a lunatic tonight. So there you go. Be careful what you wish for, kid. Congratulations to her. She's earned it. She deserves it. She belongs there. She's as educated and as good at talking about fights as anybody else in the game. So I think tonight was, was, was the beginning of a great career for her. <laughs> What's up, Don? I've spent the last 14 years in an MMA gym, so I'm well aware that in order to earn the respect in this community, you just have to show up and you have to do the work. I feel that she fits the role perfectly. She comes with great info, a sense of humor. She's a pleasure to be around. I mean, what more do you want? Welcome to the show, Laura Sanko. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Nobody's done all of it like she's done it. Fighter, desk, analyst, commentator, like she's done almost every aspect of this game. And I gotta think that there's some seven-year-old little girl that's like, I wanna do commentary for the UFC one day. Until she came along, that didn't even seem like a possibility. I get messages, fans saying, you know, hey, my daughter saw you on television. She saw you calling fights. And we'd never seen a female, you know, color commentator before. And it just opened up a conversation that I was able to have with her about her being able to do things in male, you know, dominated spaces. I wanted to be a respected voice in this sport. Comes back to that sense of power since I was a little girl. Sitting in that seat and having that headset on scratches that itch. To have notched out this little piece of history does give me a lot of satisfaction. I do want other women and other girls to see this and, and know that they can do it too.